you'll see there's a lot of context. And this hour and change that we're going to spend on this is trying to create as much clarity and context as possible. Um, we're, going to, we're going to get into specifics and get a chance to answer all your actual individual questions about how uh, calories, macros, and goals uh, apply to you in your life and your, in your lifestyle. Uh, the, um, uh, we'll, talk a, we'll talk a little bit about calories and, um, and what they mean, but I really want to get right into the material. And the reason that I'm not giving this lecture is because uh, I'm not nearly as talented at nailing calories and macros as Coach Elizabeth is. When I first started working with Elizabeth forever ago, three, three and a half years ago, something like that, um, so I, people ask all the time, you know, what to eat, how much, um, how to do it. So we sat down and we scribbled out some goals, we scribbled out some, um, um, like some calorie ideas and some macros, and she consistently hit her meal plan to the calorie, to the gram of fat, to the gram of protein, and the gram of carbohydrate, right? And she did it day in and day out, and the results speak for themselves, because, come on. <laughs> like, yeah. you have it? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, you haven't have seen uh, Coach Elizabeth on Tank Top Friday. She's got guns for days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all it is, right? It's, it's, it's not, there's no morality in it. You follow the plan, you get to where you want to go. The key is, 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 get, is creating clarity, getting rid of confusing information, and getting down into the weeds of what you actually need, and giving yourself the time. That was three and a half years ago. Give yourself time to practice and the habits that support your goals. So, Coach Elizabeth is going to walk us through how to pick macros, pick goals, and then create your meal plan based on what you need. Without further ado. Hi. Coach Elizabeth, I don't know everybody. Um, I'm Coach Elizabeth, I don't know everybody here, but. Okay, so I did start three and a half years ago with Josh. And at that time, I was already recording my food. I uh, I'd started, I had stopped eating sugar right before I started training with him. So I was recording just to keep myself accountable to make sure that I wasn't by accident eating sugar. Because like for real, like that shit happens. <laughs> you know? You're like going through your day and you're like, I'm just gonna stop for a cup of coffee and a Rice Krispie treat because I forgot that I don't eat sugar anymore. <laughs> so every single thing that I put in my mouth, I wrote down. So that was where I started, right? And that is, I always recommend to start just by writing down what you're eating, just to get that practice, right? And that's, so in those three and a half years, you know, I've had different goals. You can always change your goals. You can change your mind, you could do something else. I also had surgery in that time, and so I had to eat for recovery for that. I mean, that was like, probably what, like four to six months? of eating almost 3,000 calories a day, which was like <laughs> really hard, but, okay. I just can't check my notes. Do it. All right. All right, so today we're just, we're gonna start with where we are. We're gonna look at what our goals are, and then we're gonna look at what we need to get to those goals and the steps you need to take there, right? I know a lot of you are doing the precision nutrition programming, Right? And so this fits in with all of it. This is not instead of that. Right? So it is one thing at a time. We're not trying to go straight to overwhelm. Right? Like if you're somebody that is eating 1,200 calories a day, I'm not going to tell you to go home and start eating 2,100 calories a day right now. You know, It's one thing at a time. We're going to work up to it. So again, get a notebook, download my fitness pal, and just start reporting what you're eating right now. That is in your pocket. I think it's on page two. So many numbers, where do I start? Right? This is where we start, just with that food journal, right? I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. Killing it. Good. Don't yeah. be. Don't be. <laughs> I just needed to put that out there. Sorry. I don't even know what a macro is. So. <laughs> that wasn't very professional. Okay. <laughs> All right, so when we're looking at our food, we can break down all of our food into three categories. These are your macronutrients. We can break everything down into carbs, protein, and fat. 
When I look at my carbs, my protein, and my fat, my carbs are for energy, right? My protein is for recovery, and my fat is for rest. Fat slows down your metabolism. There's nothing wrong with fat. Don't be afraid of it. Also, don't be afraid of carbs. A lot of us are afraid of carbs, right? Like, it's just food. This is all just energy. It's fuel for our bodies, right? Can you say that one more time? Say it, carbs are for what? Protein? Carbs are for energy. Protein is for recovery. And fat is for rest. Thank you. Yep. And so with our food, right, like I really, I, it is a huge part of like my food and my food plan to not to demonize anything, right? I'm someone that I avoid sugar. I do eat some sugar now, but I'm also someone that doesn't have an off switch, right? So like, if I start eating sugar, I'm probably not going to stop for the day, right? Like, and that's, it just, it is what it is. And then I try and move on the next day, right? But I do try to eat minimally processed protein, veggies, carbs, and fats, right? And, you know, with our precision nutrition, we talk about eating minimally processed foods. We talk about eating slowly. We talk about breathing and putting the fork down in between bites. So remember those things. If you're like, I have no idea what minimally processed food looks like, we have Warrior 20 sheets for you if you would like to take one home. All right. So just that we have that basis down. It's like, how much energy do I need? If my food is energy, what do I need? When we look at our in-body sheets, we have our BMR. Our BMR is a basal metabolic rate. If you were in a coma, this is what your body would need just to sustain systems. This is by no means what we should be, all that we should be consuming. Right, so don't look at that number and say, oh, like my BMR is 1,400, so I should be eating 1,200 calories so that I can lose weight. Like, no, you are not in a coma, all right? Like you, people, <laughs> like you all have things that you do every day. You come in and train a few times a week, right? Some people six times a week. We are doing lots of things. Okay. All right, so BMR is only if you're in a coma, got it? <laughs> so we're gonna take these numbers. And you're gonna look at the different levels of activity. This is on the last page here. If you're somebody who has a desk job that maybe goes and like walks for lunch, that's pretty much a sedentary lifestyle. Right, by what we're judging here, right? So you would multiply your BMR times 1.25. If you're somebody who has light activity that you work out two, three times a week, you would multiply that times 1.375. Moderate activity, 1.55, that's three to five workouts a week. And if you're training every day, then you multiply that BMR times 1.725. So this is all on that last page there, right? This is going to All right, good. So now, sometimes when we multiply our BMR times that, we're like, oh my god, that is a huge number, right? Don't be afraid. <laughs> you can do it. I can do it. So like, that means that you can do it, right? So just breaking these numbers down, right? Some options we have for goals. We have fat loss as a goal. We have muscle gain as a goal and endurance. That's if you're not trying to gain or lose, you just want to fuel all of your daily activities and feel good, have enough energy, be sleeping well, all right? So if we're aiming for fat loss, we're gonna make small steps Right? Because you don't want to, all this, like I said before, you don't want to go from eating 1,800 calories to 1,200 or from eating 1,200 to 1,800. We're going to take small steps. So you will add or subtract 150 calories at a time. That's for a week. Right? So like for that whole week every day, subtract 150 calories from that total daily energy expenditure that we just calculated. Right? And see how you do after a week. Right? So, if you've, so for that one week, 
you're like, okay, I'm in a deficit of 150 calories and I'm gaining weight. Take off another 150 calories, see what happens. And really 150 calories, it's like half a protein, you guys. It's not a ton of food. Nope. So we do, everything is taken in small measured amounts. Yes. What if you're not even close to eating that many calories a day? Then you slowly step it up to that. Okay. Right? And so really looking at it, you know, I, I was someone that when I started with Josh, I was eating 18, 1900 calories a day and my weight was totally stable, right? Like I just, I was the same weight for months and like, and I was getting stronger, but like my measurements just weren't really changing. It didn't look like I was really gaining muscle. Right, and I was like, well, like I'm kind, of, like I was like kind of okay with it, but I was like, what if I was a little bit stronger? What if I was a little bit leaner? And so Josh was like, all right, we're gonna um, bump it up 150 calories, and I was like, ah, that's scary, because you're, you're like, if I eat more food, then I'm gonna gain weight, right? And I lost weight, and then we bumped up my calories more, and I lost more weight. And then we bumped up my calories to, I, I think we had gotten up to like 22, 2300 calories. And I had lost like 4% body fat, right? It's about fueling your body. You know, when you put the proper fuel in your body, your body knows what to do with it. I mean, I'm literally taking in the amount of me being in a coma. Yeah. For the day. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just gonna, we'll step it up by 150 calories. Yeah. And it is, you know, it like we have, it's not intentional. I just no, totally. I'm and not... it's and this is also like if you go on the internet and you're like womenshealth.com, what should I be eating in a day? They're like you should be eating 800 calories. Yeah. Except on training days, then you can have 1,200. <laughs> this I like I don't even know where yeah. they get this information from. It's like it's terrifying, and it just it creates this culture of fear around food. You know, there is so much fear around food, and the food is just. You know, like we can use it for our goals or no. I'm not afraid of the food. Okay. I'm afraid of Good. the scale. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that scale too. <laughs> Don't worry about the scale. That's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is on tape. This is great. This is great. This is great. Warm in here. <laughs> So are what you saying like that whole myth about if you don't eat enough calories, your body goes in starvation mode and yeah. you don't lose weight? I mean, is that what's happening to me? It, I don't. Because I don't think it's starvation. Okay, because like we see people starving around the yeah. world, and they are fucking skinny. Yeah. Right. Well, we have, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I. So now also, I mean like mind you, I am not a nutritionist, I am yeah. not a dietitian. Okay, so like I don't have a degree in this. I personally don't believe that that is starvation mode, right? Because we're not starving. Yeah. Because right? some people do add calories and lose weight. Totally. Because their what body happens is, so is, is that our bodies don't have enough nutrients and it causes inflammation. And I'm pretty sure that that is what was happening for me at least is that I had a lot of inflammation going on. And I am, I'm someone that's really prone to inflammation. I have celiac yeah. disease, which I was only diagnosed with 10 years ago. So like I lived the first almost 30 years of my life with intense inflammation all the time, you know? And then I, like sugar just like sends my body through the roof. Like I can be 24% body fat, eat candy for a day, get on the in body and the next day, Alexa in the back is all like, hey, Elizabeth, you're 29% body fat, you know? And it's like, I didn't gain that much body fat. It's just that inflammation. You know? What about the math around it? Because one calorie equals like 3,500, or 3,500 calories equals one pound of body fat, right? And if you divide that by 150, that's 23 weeks. But you know what? Like pounds. that is in a vacuum. Okay. That's in a vacuum in a lab. Everybody's body's different. Everybody's metabolism is different, you know? Um, and so, and that's why we just want a starting point, you know, and, and then from there, because like once you have a controlled experiment, then you can make changes and see where your results are. And if you're not getting the results you want, you can make more changes. All right. Yeah, no, okay. I mean, I, 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 he, uh, he put me on an anti-inflammatory for a few 
few days and I lost that pound right. in that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like if I stop eating sugar, and yeah. I eat sugar probably two days a week, yeah. right? Because we're not perfect. And for, for the whole day, mind you. Right? Yeah. Like, so like two days a week, I'll, I will have sweets. <laughs> but, um, and so if I totally cut out sweets, I will lose five pounds in a week. Yeah. And it, I just, I'm like, what, is it worth it? I really like Jello, you guys, like a lot. <laughs> Jello is, I know, of all things. Like, it's like I could, like, there's so many other delicious things that I could be like, oh, I really want whatever. Tiramisu, no, I really like Jello a lot. <laughs> it's and good with pineapple. Things. Right? It's, it's good with don't pineapple. Don't judge me. <laughs> Oh, I like all the jokes. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so let's see. Sorry. Trying to, trying to stay on track. All right. So, some words on here that you may not know what they mean. So, BMR, we know is basal metabolic rate. All right. TDEE, we have here. That is your total daily energy expenditure. So, that's when you multiply your BMR times your activity level. Right? So that's your TDEE. -E. So from there, we want to decide what we're going to do with this, right? My goal, my personal goal. So I have a page in here. It's a day in the life of my food. My goal is to build muscle, right? My BMR is 1,500. My TDEE -E is 2,300. I don't always hit that number. Sometimes I exceed that number. And there's, you know, like this is... Just like that culture of fear around food, you know, if you use my fitness pal and if I put in, you know, 2,300 calories and I eat 2,302 calories, I'm in the red. <laughs> you, my fitness pal. You know, it is, it's just like it's all this subliminal stuff. Don't pay attention to that. Like, I'll even sometimes, just so that I don't get those, like, negative connotations of, like, being in the black or in the red, I'll set my calories to, like, 2,700. Right? Just so that I'm like, I'm, I'm in the black. <laughs> you know? there. So my, car, my, uh, my macro breakdown for building muscle is 40% of my calories come from carbs, 30% of my calories come from protein, and 30% come from fat. All right. So when you're figuring out these numbers for yourself, you're going to multiply your BMR times 40%. That will give you the number of calories of carbs you're going to eat, right? So my number of carbs, or, oh. Wait, is it TDE yeah. or BMR times? BMR. Okay. Yeah. But we don't That's take our activity level calories, we take our BMR calories. No, so you times? BMR times activity level equals this amount? Yes. And that's the where we start with. Yes, so this is a number. BMR. Okay. Yeah, the TDEE. -E. All right, so I'm just going to pull up my calculator here. All right. So my TDEE -E -E is 2,300. That times 40% gives me 920. So that's 920 calories from carbs. Carbs are 4 calories a gram. So I'm going to divide this by 4, and that gives me my 230. All right. So we have your T D E E. So I'm not sure where I should be on this because I want fat loss, but I also want to do muscle gain. But yeah, I'm having to add calories since I'm not. So you know what? You can have like you don't need to have like just the one goal, okay. but you have to have one most important. Goal. Okay. All right. And so start with looking at that. Also, if you're new to weight training, you're going to gain muscle. It just, it comes because you're moving weights. So you are tearing down and then building up that muscle, right? So should I be doing at the negative 150? If that is your main goal. Even though I'm not hitting that on a daily basis? I mean, my main yeah. goal is to, so yeah. I mean, it's about, yeah. it's all of them, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's the thing. So, so like, you just what you want to rate, right? It's going to be one thing you want the most, the next thing you want the second most, and then the third thing that you're like, eh, it is whatever. It'll come, or I can work on that later. So you eat 
eating that burrito bag. Speaking of goals, <laughs> So TDEE. So every gram of carbs is four calories. So that minus twenty divided by 4 equals 230. It's a lot of carbs. <laughs> it is a lot of carbs. But you know what? I really, I'm like, you know, I'm turning 40 this year. I want to see how strong I can get. I want to see how much muscle I can get. Maybe I'll change my mind later and go for different goals. But I don't know. I'd be hurt all my life. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with what's happening. Um, and it also means I get to get new leggings, so everybody, and then you guys get all my old leggings, right? Everybody wins. All right. So the way that I break this down in a day, I eat five meals a day, and I also, I have a protein and carb shake while I'm working out. And that, that is the one place where I have sugar every day, because when I'm working out, my body needs really readily available carbs and sugar <laughs> right there, right? So I break it down by five meals. You could just take that 230 grams of carbs and divide that by five and just have that, you know, for every meal, right? I am not that disciplined. Because <laughs> I'm like, after I work out, I want to eat a lot. Uh, so I do, and then my meals taper and change. But I also, so like I look at my carbs that are for energy. I want more of that energy and I want more of that protein recovery around my workout, right? So that's why after I work out, I eat 80 grams of carbs, right? That's like two cups of gluten-free pasta. Have that with some salmon and asparagus. It, this is what I ate yesterday. It was delicious. Um, and then as I get closer to my bedtime, I think more about slowing my digestion down, right? And so with that, I want that slow digesting fat, right? And so for my dinner and for my, uh, I do cake. Casein protein turns into pudding if you add almond milk, you guys. I <laughs> so I make a casein pudding before bed every night with peanut butter. It's really good. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have lots of recipes that you can make with protein powder as well. There. So, so it is really just about taking these numbers and dividing it between the number of meals you eat a day. I know that not everybody eats five meals a day. That's fine. You know, maybe you eat three meals and a snack. Maybe you eat eight meals, you know. Like we also, we have some people that work out here that are RNs that work 12 hour shifts. You know, and so like it's about eating like two protein bars in that 12 hour shift and then actually getting to eat meals afterwards, you know. We can divide these numbers up any way that we need. You know, there is no magic time of day to eat or not eat. You know, like eating at night is not gonna make you overweight. If you eat an extra 4,000 calories after 10 p.m., that's what's gonna make you gain weight, right? But also, like, just, like, stopping eating at 7 p.m. isn't gonna do anything. Yes. Uh, on the days like that you might come in here and do a workout, do you vary the total calorie intake then for that day? I don't, and that is something, that's like something that's much more advanced. So yeah. it's basically the same? It's the same, yeah. No matter what. Yeah, the same every day. That's so like if I know that I'm going to go on away on vacation and I'm not going to be weight training, that I'm maybe just going to be like jumping rope and like doing some push-ups, <laughs> then I will be like, all right, you know what, that's actually more of a light activity level, not moderate. And so then I'll adjust my calories there. But, um, but for the most part, <clears throat> you're just talking about looking at your activity by the week and as an aggregate. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, so looking at everything by a week. Looking at that big picture. Because, I mean, I had to get rid of my digital scale at home because it's like it was in my bathroom and I'd be like, oh, I'm washing my hands, I'll just step on the scale. And I'd be like, up three pounds. And I was like, where did that come from? And then the next day, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm washing my hands, I'm gonna step on the scale, I'm down 10 pounds. Like, what the fuck? If you weigh yourself every day, you need to take an average of those numbers. You know, I really don't recommend weighing yourself more than once a week. And that's also, that's like when you're trying to make changes. Weigh yourself once a week, see where you're at. And women, don't weigh yourself around your cycle. Do not get on the in body around your cycle. There is like <laughs> one magic week of the month, actually, for women to like get on the scale and in body. Because like, <laughs> Turns out hormones affect everything. I mean, maybe everybody agrees with that. <laughs> All right. All right. So, is, should we do, like, okay, it's been five minutes. Woo! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, We're half an hour in. We're going to go into all of the different kinds of macros and then make food out of it. Okay. All right. There we go. All right, so my carbs are 230. All right. So we have carbs, protein, and fat. My carbs are 230. My protein is 175, and then my fat is 75. Are those any more calories? No, these are grams of macros. So here, so breaking all of this down to actual food, that's where we are on that last page. Do you not have the last page? Okay. Yeah. All right. Here, I'll back it up a step. All right. So what you're gonna do? So you have your BMR, which you multiply times your activity level. And that equals your total daily energy expenditure. Right. Which is, for me, 2,300 pounds. So from here, I'm going to multiply that 2,300. We're going to do carbs first. So that 2,300. <coughs> times 40% equals 920 calories, all right? That's calories, not carbs. Carbs are four calories a gram, so I divide that 920 by four, and that is what gives me my 230. And then my protein is 2300. So she's taking it from gram or certain calories to calories per macro to gram of kind of calories per macro. So 230 grams of carbs, we're about to find out how many grams of protein. And I'm looking over everybody's shoulder, and it looks like as you do the math, this is it's it's coming in very similarly to some uh, heuristics that you read a lot about, about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Um, or lean body mass if you want to get really, really down into the weeds. But, so we've got 175 grams of protein. Gangster! Man, I, I heard it. Sorry. Well, so when I first started looking at my food with Josh, he told me to start eating my body weight and grams of protein. And I was already, I was probably eating about 100 grams of protein a day at the time. And I was like, there is no way in hell I could eat more than 100 grams of protein in a day. Uh, turns out I'm really good at it. <laughs> it took me a while though. All right. And so really that first thing to focus on is protein, right? Once you're eating that much protein, there's not going to be that much room for other stuff, right? So really start focusing on hitting that protein number first. And like, and I start, you know, like I start with my first meal of the day. I put 
two scoops of protein in a, um, in a smoothie, right? So I'm like, all right, I know that I already have 40 grams of protein right there, you know? I also, you know, because like 175 grams of protein is a lot, really. I pretty much double up protein servings throughout the day that I'll have like two servings of tempeh, I'll have, you know, seven grams, not seven grams, seven ounces of chicken breast in a meal, you know, and it, it's, it is a lot. How many, <laughs> how many grams of protein are in seven ounces of chicken breast? Um, so let's see, um, four ounces of raw chicken breast has a between 20 and 25, right? So that has between 40 and 50 grams of protein in them. All right, that is the one that is different. So while carbs and protein are four calories per gram, fat is nine. <laughs> so we're gonna divide that number by nine and that. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> These are my numbers, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this, so we take the percentage, right? That's gonna give you the number of calories of that macro, and then you divide that for carbs, you divide that number by four, right? Same thing with protein, you divide that number by four, that will, and then for fat, you divide that number by nine. That gives you the number of grams you need for that macro. So one of the things I like about this display is um, once you start to get into the weeds of your particular body, it, 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 it takes away some of the, um, the stereotypical like men's protein needs versus women's. Yeah. Because Elizabeth and I are similarly sized and our macro breakdowns are, are similar, so we're eating very close to the same meal plan. I'm seeing about 20% more calories in any of those things, but it's really about what your body, where your, where your body's at today and what your goals are in terms of your needs, right? And then how, how well you can stick to it. Yeah. I also, I recommend counting one thing. I recommend counting your macros for your calories, right? Because like trying to count everything can be really crazy making and really overwhelming. And really, it's the macros are where it's at, you guys. <laughs> it really is. You know, and so, like, I enter in my food into my fitness pal just because I like to make graphs and do math. I understand not everybody likes to do that, right? <laughs> I like to send Josh uh, screen grabs of my, uh, of my macro graph and be like, oh, what's up? <laughs> you know, <laughs> look who nailed it, right? But, I mean, it's just... But do you use the premium? I don't. I don't. So on my fitness pal, uh, I do have an Android phone, so I, I know that it's um, that it's a little bit different. So on my fitness pal, if you go to your daily log, mm -hmm. and if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a tab. Or so this is on Android. I don't know if it's on the bottom on iPhones. There's a tab that is nutrition. So here, there's a macro. There's a macro tab under nutrition, and so that will show you your chart of where you are so far in the day, right? And you can always adjust it. If you're like, whoa, turns out I ate 60% carbs for breakfast, and you know, eat some more protein for lunch. These 